Nadine Gardimer's novel Julie's People depicts the lives of a liberal white South African family, the Smales. They are forced to flee to the native village of their black servant Julie. Gardimer sets her novel during a fictional civil war in which black South Africans violently overturned the system of apartheid. In order to escape the violence in Johannesburg, the Smales must accept Julie's charity and live a life that makes them all confront their assumptions about one another. The novel opens the morning after an exhausting three-day trip through bush country to reach the village. Julie brings tea for Maureen and Bamford Smales and breakfast for their children, Victor, Gina and Royce. After experiencing disorientation from the trip, Maureen asks her husband about their vehicle, a small truck called a Bucky. He tells her that Julie has hidden it. The Smales find themselves dependent on Julie and Julie's family questions their presence in the village. He explains their situation, telling his mother and wife, Martha, about the violence in the country. They cannot, however, fully believe his account, given their past experience with white dominance. To do something other than listen constantly for news on his radio, Bam Smales builds a water tank for the village. Maureen tries to read a novel, since Julie will not let her work, but discovers that no fiction can compete with their current situation. She then recalls her girlhood days and remembers walking home from school with her family's black servant, Lydia, who carried Maureen's school case on her head. One day, a photographer took their picture. Years later, Maureen saw the picture in a photograph book and for the first time questioned why Lydia was carrying her books. One night after Bam unsuccessfully tries socializing with the villagers, Bam and Maureen are startled by Julie's departure as a passenger in the bucky. Anxious over losing the vehicle, they argue, blaming each other for their situation. Later, while standing nude in the rain, Maureen sees the bucky return. She falls asleep that night without telling Bam about the vehicle. When Julie comes to their hut the next day, Bam greets him with the inappropriate authority of their former relationship. Apparently ignoring Bam's tone, Julie tells them he went to the shops for supplies. Though they could, they do not ask him for the keys to the bucky. Julie begins to learn how to drive when they ask him what he will do if caught driving the vehicle, he says he will say he owns it. Later, Maureen returns the Bucky's keys to Julie. Knowing that she does not want him to keep the keys, he makes her recall his former status as a boy when he kept the keys to her house. He also recalls the distress he sensed from her at the time. Stung by his words, Maureen tries to defend her treatment of him and says their former relationship has ended, that he is no longer a servant. He then shocks her by asking if she is going to pay him this month. He offers the car keys back to her, saying he worked for her for 15 years because his family needed him to. She then retaliates by mentioning Ellen, his mistress in Johannesburg. Though feeling a hollow victory, Maureen knows Julie will never forgive her this transgression. He keeps the car keys. Bam kills two baby warthogs with his small shotgun. During the hunt, he offers to let his black hunting companion Daniel shoot the gun sometime. Bam gives the large warthog to the villagers and keeps a smaller and more tender one. Everyone joyfully feeds on the meat an intoxicating delicacy, and Bam and Maureen make love for the first time since their journey. The scene shifts to Julie and his family, eating the meat and talking about the smells. Julie discounts Martha's worries that the white family will bring trouble. Martha recalls the times without Julie 
when he like most men with the families worked in the city like the seasons the long absences of their husbands have become an expected part of black women's lives gina and her friend nico play with newborn kittens and maureen scolds them later after they listen for news on the radio bam asks maureen if she found a home for the kittens she reveals that she has drowned them in a bucket of water maureen tries working with the women in the fields digging up leaves and roots afterward she goes to see julie who is working on the bucky Julie does not want to hear about the killing on the news and hopes everything will come back all right. Maureen asks if he really wants a return to the ways things were. Julie asks if hunger compels her to search for spinach with the women. She replies that she goes to pass the time. As always, she feels that the workplace language they speak hinders their ability to communicate. When Julie says she should not work with the women, She asks if he fears she will tell his wife about Ellen. He angrily asserts that she can only tell Martha that he has always been a good servant. Maureen realizes that the dignity she thought she had always conferred upon him was actually humiliating to him. He informs her that he and the Smales have been summoned to the chief's village. Though Julie has authority in his village, they still must ask the chief's permission to stay maureen struggles with her new subservience to julie the smales visit the chief the next morning afraid that the chief will force them out the chief asks them why they have come to his nation and asks about events in johannesburg he cannot believe that the white government is powerless and the whites are running from blacks He says that the black revolutionaries are not from his nation and that the whites who would never let him own a gun will give him guns to aid in the struggle against the black attackers. He tells Bam to bring his gun and teach him how to shoot it. Outraged by this suggestion, Bam asks if the chief really intends to kill other blacks, saying that the entire black nation is the chief's nation. After further discussion, the chief allows them to stay with muawate julai and says that he will visit them to learn how to shoot bam's gun on the return trip julai explains that the chief talks instead of acts furthermore the chief who never fought the whites is too poor and defenseless to fight other blacks upon their return to their hut maureen and bam speak in the phrases they had used in their former life and these phrases cannot adequately describe their current predicament bam begins criticizing julie's new confidence and his criticisms of the chief maureen says that julie was talking about himself that he will not fight for anyone and is risking his life by having the family there maureen suggests that they leave making bam confront what they both know they have nowhere to go and no means by which to get there with the women maureen clumsily cuts grass for the huts after the cutting julie criticizes martha for placing the grass bundles in front of the bam and maureen's house where their children will ruin it they discuss julie's past and his times in the city over the last 15 years rejecting julie's contention that his family will move to the city once the fighting ends Martha suggests that he stay in the village. According to Daniel, they will no longer face white restrictions and with this city experience, Julie can run his own shop. A man brings a battery operated amplifier to the village and provides them with a night's entertainment during which many villagers drink heavily. The smales do not partake in the drinking but return to their hut where they find their gun missing. With no police to help him, Bam is important in the face of the theft. Maureen feels humiliated for Bam. She leaves to find Julie, who is by the bucky. They realize that only Daniel was absent from the party, and Maureen says Julie must get the gun from him. Daniel, however, has left. After Julie asserts that the smales always make trouble for him, 
Maureen accuses Julie of stealing small items from her in Johannesburg. Angered, he speaks to her in his own language, and she understood, although she knew no word, understood everything, what he had to be, how she had covered up to herself for him, in order for him to be her idea of him, but for himself to be intelligent, honest, dignified for her was nothing. His measure as a man was taken elsewhere and by others, his own people. Julie then informs her that Daniel has joined the revolution. She tells Julie that he abandoned Ellen and only wants the Bucky so he can feel important. But that too will become useless when his gas money runs out. After Gina goes to play with Nico and Bam goes with Victor and Royce to fish, a helicopter with unidentifiable markings flies over the village. Maureen fervently chases the helicopter and the novel ends with her still running toward it and its unknown occupants who could either be saviors or murderers.